All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. So it looks like the uh, NFL is finally starting to take note of the Las Vegas Raiders defense and why it's going to be even better than it was last year. Oh, and yeah, by the way, it was really freaking good last year. Um, everyone's freaking out. And it's not Raiders fans. Raiders fans are, are cool, calm, and collected. In fact, they're very excited about this upcoming season. Everyone is freaking out about Aiden O'Connell. Everybody's freaking out about Aiden O'Connell. Or you're freaking out about Gardner Minshew. They're thinking uh, they don't even have a quarterback. Uh, Brock Bowers is great, great draft pick. You know, pick number 13. He's an A-plus move, but who's throwing him the football? And I'm thinking, I'm sitting here to myself like, all right, Josh McDaniels was canned after the first half of the season. So then you run with a fourth-round rookie QB and Aiden O'Connell. And this is what we talked about in our video yesterday. But it's like, guys, the play calling was atrocious. The offensive line was inconsistent. In. There was no run game whatsoever. And then Zamir White came in for the final month of the season and starts lighting it up. Uh, and you add Brock Bowers and you've got Devontae Adams. And you got Jacoby Myers and Trey Tucker showed us flashes, especially in week 18 against the Broncos. Everyone's just freaking out about the quarterback position. And I'm sitting here, I'm thinking to myself, dude, they just got Brock Bowers, who will probably be a Pro Bowler right away. Uh, he was a top 10 pick. He was a consensus top 10 pick. And he fell because people were were worried that he's a tight end and it was such a great wide receiver class and it was such a great quarterback class most classes outside of this year brock bowers is clearly and consensual consensusly i don't know how to say that word or if it's even a word would be a top 10 pick so we're going to talk a little bit about the raiders defense in just a second but before we do if you guys enjoy it be sure to hit that like button hit that sub button for daily raiders content love and appreciate you guys as always i'm trying to get this video to 250 likes that would mean the absolute world to me so i was just reading an article uh, some Raiders, you know, website, something like that. And they were going through something that Bleacher Report said. So we'll get into it. Uh, here's what Bleacher Report's scouting department had to say. The Raiders season was a tale of two halves last season. The team, including the defense, was a mess under Josh McDaniels. And they struggled to a three and five start to the season. When McDaniels was fired and Antonio Pierce took over as the interim head coach, the defense blossomed. Over the second half of the season, they were among the best scoring defenses in the league with a pass rush that averaged over three sacks a game. Adding Christian Wilkins to the mix through free agency should ensure that they have one of the better pass rushes in the league. If Tyree Wilson and Jacorian Bennett can take steps forward after their rookie seasons, this unit has a ton of potential. And so basically what Bleach Report did is they ranked all 32 teams in the NFL on their defense and the Las Vegas Raiders were nine. And thank goodness some Somebody finally appreciates, somebody finally understands how good that Raiders defense was in the second half. They were clearly a top 10 unit. In fact, they were closer to one than they were 10, and they only got better. The Christian Wilkins move was huge. You ask any Raiders fan, it is absolutely huge. You can no longer freely double team Max Crosby. And we were kind of getting into that last year when Malcolm Kuntz, when Josh McDaniels was fired, officially began to more um consistently break up breakout right the raiders pass rush was incredible and i agree their defensive back unit could use some work it could use some help but jack jones is very fresh into the league he got cut by the patriots you know paired up with you know former buddy antonio pierce and the dude lights it up and plays like a cornerback one but one quick thing before we get into the defensive back room your pass rush should be able to negate it all right, your pass rush with Max Crosby, Christian Wilkins, Tyree Wilson, and Malcolm Kuntz, it should be able to at least bolster that defensive back room and give the quarterback less time to get, you know, find his guys get open. It gives your wide receivers less time to get open when Max Crosby and Christian Wilkins and all those dudes on the defensive line are running for your throat, trying to rip it off, trying to rip your head off. So I get it. The defensive back room could use some work. It could use some help. I wouldn't be surprised if they were to go out there and sign some type of veteran free agent, even if it's just more of a camp battle, even if it's just more of a guy to help, you know, bring in competition to the defensive back room with guys like Jacorian Bennett. You know, I get it. I was huge on Jacorian Bennett. On this channel, we posted the Raiders just found their, you know, secret weapon or their X factor. And it was Jacorian Bennett. I think year two, he's going to do much better. Uh, but the defensive back room isn't even that bad. It's very much like it was last season. Um, you know, I remember freaking out about it at this time last year when they lost Rocky Sin. 
and you know they lost to Meek Robertson, and that move definitely sucks. But uh, Jack Jones really picked up the slack. The dude was making pick sixes. He was causing pass breakups. He was Jack Jones was a freak. He was a freaking freak that nobody knew about because nobody was really watching the Raiders after they were, you know, what three and five to start of the season. And Josh McDaniels gets canned. So one important thing that a lot of people are missing the note on because of the quarterback situation is Antonio Pierce. And Raiders fans know exactly what I'm talking about. When Antonio Pierce was officially the interim head coach, um, it just changed completely. Like the locker room looked like it changed. People were smiling. People were happy. You want to play for somebody who cares. And, you know, even if Josh McDaniels got a bad rap and it wasn't as bad as it seemed, uh, the dude seems just from the eye test, from watching the games and, you know, his body language and all that, it just kind of appeared like Josh McDaniels didn't give a rat's ass. You know, it just appeared like that. And Antonio Pierce changed the culture literally immediately. He changed it immediately. And if you're a player, it doesn't matter if you're in the NFL, if you're in college, high school, little league, it doesn't matter. If your coach would like take a bullet for you and your coach loves you and he wants you to succeed and he's going to push you as hard as possible to extract every bit of talent, every bit of potential that you have, you unite around him because you love the dude because he loves you. And that's something that just wasn't there for a year and a half under Josh McDaniel. So people are just missing the ball on how big of a move Antonio Pierce was when he came in as interim last year and then he was officially hired as the head coach this season. Another guy who's getting a really bad rap is Luke Getze. You know, we've broken it down for you guys. I'm wearing a Chicago Bears hat as I make this video. I'm from the Chicagoland area. I've watched way too many Bears games over my life. It was not Luke Getze in the slightest. Outside of DJ Moore, there were no weapons. Cole Komet can play for sure. But there are no weapons outside of DJ Moore. And Justin Fields is just as inconsistent as they come. The dude literally statistically fumbles once a game. Their fourth quarter defense would fall apart. Their fourth quarter offense would fall apart. You can only do so much when you have an inconsistent, turnover-prone quarterback and your only real weapon, DJ Moore, is getting double-teamed every single freaking play. So I think this Raiders team, and I'm bigger on Aiden O'Connell, Gardner Minshew, than I guess the rest of the NFL media world is. I'm looking at this Raiders team that somehow went eight and nine last year. And I'm looking at this defense that's going to be even better than they were last year. Like folks, the Raiders defense might be top five this upcoming season. If you have a top five defense, you're going to be above 500. I don't care who's throwing the football. And we know Aiden O'Connell can play. We know Gardner Minshew can play. So they got a little bit of options. They got some competition in that room. I'm really high on the Raiders right now, and I know my Raiders fans watching this video are as well. So hit that like button for me. Hit that sub button if you haven't already, but give me a win-loss projection on the Las Vegas Raiders on paper as it stands right now down below. I'm going to go with 10.